You like catching lots of fish? You like catching big fish? Today I'm going to talk about a bait that I used a bunch last season. It was an awesome big fish bait, but it caught lots of all sizes of fish. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over how I rig it. There's a couple ways I do it, and if you mix those two ways up on your deep spots, you are going to put a lot of extra fish in the boat, and you might be surprised at the quality of the fish. When I pull up to my offshore structure spots, the first thing I do is grab a five inch spark shad and let it fly. It's amazing if you start your deep spots with this bait, how many big fish chomp on that thing on the first cast. It's such a simple bait to use. When I have it rigged on a three quarter ounce jig head, I just let it hit the bottom and then just mix up the retrieves. The bait itself does all the work. So many times that initial contact with the bottom, the fish will hit it. You fight it to the boat, cast back out to the same spot, pop it a couple times, and it's amazing how many times you get nailed on that second cast. It is such an efficient bait to clean some fish off of a spot. There's a bunch of different color options in the Spark Shad series, but I tend to keep it simple. I use either real, green pumpkin, or royal gill. Those three colors right there cover a bunch of bait fish that are in our lakes. And natural baits always seem like they just work for me. Fish don't shy away from something that doesn't threaten them. I'm going to go over the two ways I rig my spark shads. First is just a simple plain jig head. And I love using three quarter ounce because I can throw it a mile. I can cover water fast if I need to. It's got a big hook and the fish get stuck and they don't come off. The other way is to thread it on a skirted jig and fish it that way. And it's amazing how there's days where they don't want it just plain. They want it with this jig. But there's also days where this is too much and just the action of a plain head and a simple spark shad triggers bites. So to start with, I like to take that spark shad and trim off just a little bit of the head. And there's a couple reasons I do that. One is to make it fit flush against the jig head and two to shorten up the profile and the length just a little bit. So when a fish grabs it, they don't short strike it. It doesn't affect the action at all, but if you can get a couple extra fish in the boat, there's a reason to do it. And all I do is go behind the eyes and then just cut straight across. So you have a nice flat edge on your bait. And then with your jig head, I start with the hook point right in the middle Feed it down. And you get kind of used to where you come out there and I push it up there, but I leave a little gap. And I do that because I squirt a little super glue in there and then I push it tight, let it dry just a little bit and you have an absolute big fish catching bait. This is an awesome three quarter ounce spinner blade on the bottom hook that actually has a long shank on it so it gets it back a little further and then for the barb it's got thick strands of fluorocarbon wrapped and glued right to the shank. If you super glue your bait and push it up on this it is not coming loose and again I take that same spark shad you don't have to cut the head off but I like to flatten that up shorten it just a little bit and then slide that up on the jig same way now just make sure I got all the strands out of there and 
And when that's nice and clean, I dab a little super glue and then just push it up there. And then you have an absolute beautiful streamlined extra little flash of the spinner blade big fish presentation. My final tip for the day is to make sure you have some kind of mendic glue so you can patch up your spark shads because you're going to catch a bunch of fish, you're going to catch a bunch of big fish, and they're going to tear up that plastic. So if you can fix it up with this and get more fish out of it, it's going to save you some money.